Today, my guest is Roseanne Olson. Roseanne is a photographer, artist, author, educator, and musician based here in Seattle. I got to know Roseanne through her photo center, Northwest, and fell in love with her photographic style. Uh, let's sleep these people in. Uh, Roseanne is going to be teaching a six-week online workshop for Santa Fe starting in January. So please welcome today, Roseanne Olson. Welcome. Hi, everybody. Nice to see you all. I, I wish we could all just chat. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's what we, we can do here. We'll talk. I'll ask you a couple of questions. And from there, it'll become a, an open chat. And we can show some images and the like. Um, First, just want to, I know you and your husband, Ted, did a lot of traveling. You know, what's it, what's it like in times of COVID for you? Oh, yeah, we have a, I grew up in North Dakota, so we have a cabin there, and uh, I have a mother who lives there part-time. Uh, so I, uh, we didn't want to fly, so we drove from Seattle to North Dakota, not once, but twice this summer. Mm -hmm. so quite a trip. And on the way back, um, we went through Yellowstone, which I haven't been to for decades. And uh, that was really fun. In, in terms of being safe, I travel with a bottle of uh, Lysol spray and paper towels, hand sanitizer, and uh, we're just really careful uh, not, mm -hmm. not to uh, go into crowded places. Yeah, but you don't have any international travel going on now. Oh, I, I just, I won't be flying until we get a vaccine. Mm -hmm. We were going to go to Ireland last, this past May to celebrate my birthday, but um, COVID kind of took care of that. So yeah. that's some other time. Meanwhile, I'm not getting any older because <laughs> I still haven't celebrated that birthday. <laughs> that's cool. So going way back, um, I didn't realize this till recently that you started out studying chemistry and biology. Yeah, I did. I, I always loved art and I wanted to be an artist, even though I didn't really know what that meant or how people made a living as an artist. I just wanted to do that. And when I got to college, um, they insisted that I declare a major. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I was going to declare art, but my parents said, there's no way we'll support you because you won't be able to do it yourself. Um, so I declared medical technology as my uh, major and immediately was immersed in chemistry and biology. And I was uh, also stubborn and I minored in art and English, which were my two loves. I uh, ended up working in medical technology and then nuclear medicine um, for a total of seven years. Wow. Before I went, I went back to uh, graduate school at the University of Oregon in journalism. That was a great experience. Yeah, so you started out then as a um, newspaper photographer, photojournalist. Yeah, I did. And I, I just felt like the luckiest person in the world. My, uh, out of uh, grad school, my first job was working as a photo editor for a magazine called Running Magazine, which was owned by Nike. Mm -hmm. And in the process of working at the magazine, um, they, they had flamboyant ideas that were just, and they could afford whatever they wanted. So one of the jobs that they were, uh, one of the articles they were proposing was um, um, for, for Ken Kesey to go to China and uh, do a story about the Chinese marathon. Was he going to bring the bus? No, but you know, he was going to write something interesting. And they were searching around for a photographer. And Brian Lanker was the head of the, of the newspaper in Eugene. And I didn't know him, but I think his work, I thought his work was spectacular. So I proposed that he uh, be hired to go to China. And he was. And then he and uh, Ken became really good lifelong friends. And Brian and I became friends. He was very helpful. And when an opportunity to work at the newspaper came up, he uh, recommended that I apply for it. So um, that's how that all started. And it was a wonderful job. I just loved every day of it. Um, I can imagine. I worked there 
Right. It's a bit of background for people who don't know Ken Kesey, who's the leader of the Merry Pranksters that uh, the book, The Electric Kool-Aid Acid Test was written about. Right, and he uh, wrote One Flew Over the, over the Cuckoo's Nest, yep. Yeah, he was, and then he, he had that bus that was so famous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so anyway, that's that was the beginning. Yeah. And then it was interesting because uh, when I was in uh, um, grad school, I had been involved in photography for a long time, as many people are, um, through the passion of, of personal expression, and uh, ended up, uh, because of that, well, ended up being involved in a bunch of shows locally, and uh, had a weekly gathering of photographers, and we would invite guest uh, photographers from out of town to come and speak to our little group. And one of those was Brett Weston. So uh, we had uh, quite great speakers. But that led to my interest in photography. So when I applied to uh, University of Oregon to go to grad school, my thought was that I would be a photojournalist. Their thought was that I would be a science writer. But I ended up uh, being a, a teaching fellow in the photography department. It was a, just a great experience. My uh, master's project was a four-year project uh, called The Children of Hope, mm -hmm. which was a segue from my work in medicine into my work as a photographer. So I spent four years photographing children in the hospital and uh, outside of the hospital, kids who had cancer. I worked with 10 families over the period of four years. And uh, it was a deeply moving, uh, deeply moving subject. And it would never be allowed today because of HIPAA rules and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. But uh, uh, in my doing the project, it was uh, really a project of heart. I didn't know anything about lighting. I had one camera, an Olympus OM-1 with two lenses, a 85 and a, a 28, I think. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, with just a camera and two lenses, I did a four-year project of, yeah. of images. Do you want to show some of those? Sure, I would be happy to. So I'll just share my screen. Okay. That was for the New York City Ballet. Can you see that okay? Yes. All right. So, you know, this is another thing I have about lighting sim simply. Uh, this is one light, uh, and it's a skimming light. So it's, uh, it's not aimed at them, but it's aimed across them um, fairly close to me. And if you look at, you can see a little bit of the shadow of the shoulder blade. And you can, you can pick up a little sense of a uh, softbox in the reflections on the satin and the reflections on the, uh, on the slippers. And then this is all just um, exposure. So the... Uh, controlled by the shutter speed. So um, um, the color palette on this is soft because I was shooting um, uh, C41 color film. And it just has this beautiful sort of soft palette to it. I, it's nothing really special. It's just kind of the way I see the world. Mm -hmm. And it's Kind of works out with my choice of lighting and then the colors I pick for in this case the tutus um, they all just have this really pastel quality so this is for the New York City Ballet is that correct yeah yeah so how did you come across that job you know being out in Seattle because we always say you need to be in New York or LA or Paris but I know it's kind of crazy I mean I did have a rap in New York but this was before that, I had an assistant working for me who, I mean, a lot of my personal work is very, uh, you know, I would say it fits into this category. So mm -hmm. my assistant decided without my knowing it to um, contact the New York City Ballet because what they did at that time, and I don't know if they still do, is they elect a photographer 
to do what he or she wanted to do uh, and, th and that would be how that job was. So I got the job and I got to go to New York and location scout and worked with a producer and I got to go in the vaults of the New York City Ballet and pick out the costumes to go with the, the dancers that I got to pick out as well. So it was a wonderful, just truly spectacularly wonderful opportunity. The, the funny thing about it is that when I went to do the location scouting, it was early May and it was like 100 degrees out. <laughs> and, and then I went back to photograph it in late May, early June, and it was about 55 degrees out and raining. So it, this is how it works, you know, when you're working... In, in, on a job is like you've got a well Brian Liker my boss at uh, the register guard used to say you've got to make chicken salad out of chicken shit so I you know had to do the best I could finding locations that were uh, out of the rain and undercover um, there's another one here uh, that exemplifies that really well yeah, so this was uh, freezing cold out, and see all this shininess on this is it at, um, in Central, uh, no, on Riverside Park. Cloisters? A boy, a boathouse. Oh, or, okay. Um, this is all wet. It's all raining and wet, and so, uh, and uh, you know, it was miserable. But she, the ballet dancers are tough, tough people, and she, uh, you know, she put up with it. We wrapped her in down and uh, down comforters and kept her warm until the time of the photo. And this is just lit with one light as well. I have a, a light off to the left there and just kind of uh, slightly behind her. So it creates a little bit of a rim on, uh -huh. on her face, lights the bird. Yeah. So was, Go ahead. So was that a real bird trained or was that? It's, it's part of my crew. <laughs> <laughs> I know you have a lot of birds in your photos. I do. I've traveled all over the world with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. May Speaking I, of rain, oh, go ahead. Yeah, may I ask? I, I also have an affinity for film. So can I ask on the, you don't have to go back to the uh, three ball, uh, ballerinas, but uh, what camera did you use uh, on that? And do you still shoot um film or have you shoot, been shooting digital or, or what? Yeah, I, I have been shooting digital for a long time and I'll tell you why in a second. Uh, that was a Contax 645, no, a Fuji 645 format. So it, it had, uh, I could flex the front bellow and bellows and get a selective depth of field with it. It was a and, oh, then the other thing about the lenses for the um, Fuji, they produced uh, a, a sort of a flatness that I later had a Contax um, uh, that was a much contrastier. Generally, most of my 35 millimeter work is with Canon, but uh, for a long time I was working with uh, 4x5 and then uh, the um, Fuji, which I, I loved. But I ended up switching to um, Canon Digital. I lo love working digitally, especially with portraits, because I I'm the kind of photographer who likes my subjects to like what uh, I'm doing, uh, what we're getting, and to feel that they're a part of the portrait process. So shooting digitally allows me to uh, really connect and uh, share what I'm getting with them and then uh, work toward getting an image that they feel represents who they are and that I like too. So mm -hmm. I don't feel like I'm sacrificing anything. Uh, and, and if there is a question, I will do something for me and then something that satisfies the client. But I, um, I like having the digital share. Mm -hmm. Do you shoot tethered and show as you're going or just use the back of the camera? No, I just use the back of the camera. I feel like it gets too obsessive if I'm being, uh, tethered. Yeah. So it sounds like you really enjoy the process of the photography. Is it? Do you enjoy the process or the product more? 
I love the process, mm -hmm. uh, but I want the product to of be, course. <laughs> you, know, you know, the time spent in editing and retouching is, is as important to getting mm -hmm. a final, final result. Yeah. And talking about the rain in New York, you also had an assignment in the Puerto Rican rainforest. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, I, I, okay, I could put that up too. Boy, I didn't put that in my little. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, um, I did a big advertising job in uh, Puerto Rico. I ended up going there twice, and this was quite a long time ago. Uh, we were there during the moment of 911. Oh, wow. And, and we were actually in a beautiful little alley in uh, uh, old Puerto Rico, old San Juan, mm -hmm. photographing a little boy kicking a soccer ball. And the uh, art director got a phone call from her husband who told her about the twin, the trade towers. And uh, it, it was the weirdest feeling to be working on something created for advertising, which is its own kind of fake world, and have this devastating event go on that was beyond real, it was surreal, and involved in the death of so many people. Mm -hmm. um, it, was, it, it was just an inexplicable event. But prior to that, I went, uh, I, I was there twice for two different trips. And let me just bring that up and I'll, I'll open my share again. How were you able to travel home from Puerto Rico after 911? Yeah, it took four days of constant calling uh, American Airlines and we could not get through. So finally we packed up 13 cases of gear, lighting equipment and so on and uh, went to the airport and just waited. Wow. We were the first plane out of Puerto Rico and got to uh, Miami in the middle of the night. I had secured hotel rooms for me and my crew, but we only spent two hours in the hotel rooms and we ended up waiting in a line that was, uh, you know, it was at least a half a mile long uh, to get to the desk to check in. And the, the whole ambiance here's the thing it was the opposite of today where everybody is so upset and angry at each other it was like there was love everywhere mm -hmm. it was palpable you you just looked at the person i'm going to start to cry but you <laughs> it's okay the person next to you and you just wanted to hug them and say here we are we're so happy to be alive and standing in this line. It, it was like everybody felt really fragile and full of love. And I wish it could be that way <laughs> now. Um, let me open that shot because it's, it's pretty interesting. How well did you know Brian? I knew Brian very well. He was a mentor, um, a good friend, uh, he was, um, and his wife is still a friend uh, of ours. Um, who is talking? That, that was Michael, Michael Newell. Newell. Oh, hi, Michael. Where, did you go to his memorial service? Did I, I'm sorry? Did you go to his memorial service in Eugene? No, uh, but oh. Brian, Brian was, uh, one of the, was one of the first explorers of light that I, uh, I uh, offered him a contract. Oh. And, uh, and Brian... Um, I thought it was a, uh, an incredible um, uh, uh, image maker. I uh, didn't matter whether it was for uh, photojournalism, editorial, he just had a very interesting uh, vision about um, uh, the visual experience for, for, for other people looking at, at his work. Yeah. I. I he was a wonderful mentor to me. He couldn't have been more generous. Um, he taught me so much and it was so not fair that he, he also died of pancreatic cancer. I know. Yeah, I know that. 
Oh, I know you know, but I was just saying it for oh, oh. others. Cause yeah, we were talking about, talking about yeah. Dean Collins because um, I also uh, took a workshop from Dean. So I'll hear this one of Brian's. I can't see. Uh, uh, I want to say yes. This is the, tr the, tr the frog on a lily. That's something mm -hmm. Brian would do. Yeah. yeah. One of the funniest things I uh, images I saw, he he did a um, uh, um, advertising, or maybe it was or editorial of uh, uh, two guys in. Uh, I don't know whether I can't remember whether it was Scotland or Ireland, whatever, holding a, a mug of uh, a beer, toasting. Mm -hmm. the, yeah, that was that was in France. It's a wonderful image. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we can see the rainforest photo now. <clears throat> right. So this was um, up in the rainforest. Uh, there are so many stories around this, but they wanted me to photograph somebody on the edge of a cliff overlooking. Uh, the valley and i went in locations scouted it and it was a big foggy day and the wind was blowing about 50 miles an hour and uh, i could barely stand up in the wind and i said you know i'm not going to be responsible for somebody falling off the cliff let's find a different location so this was uh not too far away the location was done location scouting was done and then we went back uh, to uh, photograph it at another time. Is this regular black and white or is this infrared? This is regular black and white. I had that same question a couple of weeks uh. ago when I saw this image. <laughs> yeah, it, and, and I'm lighting it because it, uh, uh, the light in there was very heavy. So I've, I've got some, I, was, I always work with pro photo equipment. So I was, uh, I had a whole crew and we lit it and um, when it stopped raining, we got the models dressed and out there. And um, I was standing underneath a rain canopy of canvas and, or plastic. And um, so it's like, well, what's behind the scenes? You just have no idea uh, when you look at a picture. Do you use a uh, producer on these shoots? And did they send an art director out on this? Yes, to both of those questions. Yeah, I had a producer and an art director on this. A really great group of people. Uh, there's another one I took. I'll put it up. So the the day after 911, we went to Culebra Island uh, by ferry, and uh, I'll show you this image. So uh, this was the image. Let's see if you can can you see that? Okay. Yes. The guys loves the surf. Anyway, the uh, Puerto Rico ended up using this as a full page uh, note of sympathy to the United States. Uh, just a couple days or a few days after nine one one, and this this was the day after nine one one that I photographed it. Mm -hmm. So about a week later, they used it as a full page ad expressing sympathy. To what was going on in the world and so yellow yellow filter um you know i don't remember uh i a lot of times yeah i might have had a bit of yellow but i honestly i don't remember did you shoot black and white or did you convert no i i shot this whole thing in black and white which seems mm -hmm. kind of weird for as beautiful a country as Puerto Rico with all its color, but they wanted black and white. Mm -hmm. And this is all on film? Yeah. And th this again is all with that uh, Fuji 645 camera. Let me go to... Uh... Yeah, so this is uh, behind the scenes. This is my assistant and uh, the art director and stylist and uh, another assistant and I don't know who that is and then I think the uh, producer took this picture mm -hmm. and this uh, big camera is a 645 you can see that that's great 
So yeah. who were some of your other influences in your portraiture? I think I see things like Irving Penn in there. You have this, this pension toward. Yeah. Um, well, I truly, truly deeply admire Irving Penn's work and his simplicity of lighting. I always feel that lighting a portrait should be as simple as possible so that it doesn't get in the way of connecting with the subject. Um, Both uh, as the photographer and the viewer. Pardon me? Both as the photographer and the viewer. Yeah, because if I'm messing around, most of the work I do is lit by myself. I, mm -hmm. I, uh, I do the lighting. And if I'm doing work with assistants, I tell them, you know, this is what I want. Let's do this. And uh, I'm open to suggestions, but I, um, I do try to keep the lighting pretty simple because I don't want it to get in the way of the actual manifestation of who that person is. Anyway, back to Irving Penn. I deeply admire his um, connection with his people. I mean, I, I just, it takes quite a connection to get that depth he got to with a lot of his portrait subjects. Really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I just, I love his group uh, portraits. I use them a, a lot when I teach as examples of what I think uh, a, a really great group portrait would be. Um, I also, you know, of course, love the work of Annie Leibovitz. Um, I, I love her lighting. It's so unintrusive, really, for the most part. It's just sort of natural, but as photographers, we know uh, how much expertise goes into creating that kind of subtle, understated lighting. Really beautiful work. And of course, I love Greg Heisler's work. Mm -hmm. um, and I love Greg Heisler's lighting. And I love his sense of humor, which really comes across in some of his portraits, like Michael Bloomberg in The Tree, for example. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love, you know, those are my top three. Plus Brian, of course. <laughs> yeah. So you've got a class coming up in January at um, Santa Fe. Yeah, I am teaching a five week, six week uh, lighting class called the ABCs of Light. I wrote a book called ABCs of Beautiful Light. And it's, it's a, you know, it's a, a class for people who are pretty new to lighting and who want to learn more. And I start out with natural light because I feel like a lot of people don't really understand how natural light can serve us. Uh, a lot of times we think, oh, we have natural light and that's just all we have. But natural light can actually be manipulated through black cards and white cards and uh, V-flats and those kind of things. And uh, also, also then we move on to uh, artificial continuous light and uh, introducing strobe light and then combining strobe light and, and artificial light. Um, I... When I teach, I give assignments that are really specific to what we're trying to learn. And then I spend a lot of time giving feedback about what, um, what that person tried to achieve. And hopefully teach people to see each other's work and to learn how to critique it in a kind way so that you not only learn to do your own work, but you learn to see uh, and give feedback to other people on their work. So I feel like, you know, that's an important part of how I teach. Uh, so when the student goes away from the class, they have learned about light. They have learned to observe light and how to create it. So from then on, they can look at a picture in a magazine or in a book and go, Oh, I think I can look at the catch lights and I think I can figure out how this was lit and maybe I can try my own version of that and um, and then and then look at other people's work and say, oh, I see, you know, this is how and what, you know, what could be improved or, or whatever. Yeah, I just put a link to the workshop in the chat area if people want to check that out. Roseanne? 
Yeah. For that book, is there more than one edition? Yeah, I've got uh, three books. The one about the women uh, the, uh, called This Is Who I Am. Then if you go on Amazon and type in my name, you'll see yes. all of them. Yeah. I'm wondering about the ABCs of Beautiful Light. Is there more than one edition? Oh, no, just one. Okay, and it was published 400 years ago. 400 years ago? <laughs> or <to> Amazon. <laughs> 72. I was very early in the light. <laughs> and you, you have a second lighting book, intro. correct? I was just teaching how to light with the sun at that time. For <laughs> but Roseanne, don't you have a second lighting book? No, I have a light. It's called The Art of the Portrait. Oh, The Art of the Portrait. Okay, The Art of the Portrait. And there's a little bit about lighting in there, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Roseanne, I'm looking at your series, Rapture, uh, yeah. on your website, um, yeah. which is beautiful. Thank you. Could you speak to that, and especially the, the, the images that are legs or bodies, women floating in water? Yeah, I'm going to pull it up right now, and I'll share the screen with you. So that is one example, and this is another one. And there are others, too. Um, so what did you want me to talk about? Um, um, just speak to it. How did you come up with it? What was it for? Uh, how did you shoot it? Uh, how did you develop the idea? Just yeah, just, just two sentences asking, answering those questions. <laughs> <laughs> Another long-term personal project. Initially, when I was in graduate school, I was also in the art department. I was in both journalism and art. And when I was in the art department, I had to do a project, and so I always loved water. I continue to love water. Um, when I was a kid, I used to swim in the Y every day after school, or not maybe every day, but frequently. And, and in the summertime, we had a cabin at a lake where I still have a cabin. And so then I'm a big, long-time rafter and kayaker. And so water is really part of my life. Just because it was the breast showing, I don't know if Facebook would. Oh, got it. it. <laughs> I'll, I'll go to the next one. Okay. Yeah, we got to watch Facebook and YouTube. <laughs> okay. They're morons. <laughs> yeah, so this is another one. That was yeah, that's beautiful. Useless. Um. So anyway, uh, a while Oh, I co-founded an art group 17 years ago called Art Chicks. And every month we would meet, and we met up through COVID, so a long time. And one, one time we, we would give ourselves assignments. One time we gave ourselves the assignment uh, swimming, something about swimming. And I decided to take a friend to a swimming pool and photograph her. And uh, it, it just turned out so well, and it was such a pleasure to be back at the water. I just decided to continue uh, the series. And so this is about five years of work, probably. But um, I would photograph women or dresses in a swimming pool, and then I would frequently combine those images with cloud images from either from the sky or this particular cloud image is from the lake uh, where my cabin is. So um, just basically uh, natural light. And uh, my whole concept behind doing it was this, this whole idea of, of where do we go when we die? What, what's our next step in, in the progress from life to death? And so this is sort of exploring that nether world between life and death. That's great. So, and I, I've had uh, several ex exhibits of the work. I have a gallery, uh, Robin Rice Gallery in New York, uh, showed it when it first came out. Any other questions? Stunning work, beautiful work. Thank you. Uh, shall I just show you a few more pictures? Yeah, sure. I'll just go through them. Uh, this is a, uh, oh, I have to reshare. No, you're, no, you're sharing. You just hit the play. 
Okay. So and this was another one from uh, my work uh, at the Register Guard. I did a big story um, about Carmelite nuns who were cloistered, and we got special permission to go in. I've always been curious about people who make really extreme commitments to religious life. So I photographed these women uh, 40 years ago, more than that, and uh, we've been friends ever since. I've been back to visit them many times. This job that I did for the newspaper ended up getting sold to Geo magazine. Uh, so I got a, a really wonderful big spread in that magazine. Uh, this is a, just an example of really simple lighting, um, working with just an old Norman 200B and to, light, to do this guy's portrait for uh, Adobe magazine way back when. Uh, I love doing creative assignments, and this is an illustration I did for um, a health magazine um, having to do with illustrating losing one's memory to dementia or Alzheimer's disease. And um, I lit this with hot lights, and I used a Polaroid film, Polaroid Type 55 film, which you had to peel apart and the negative had a kind of gooey surface that um, you could move around with your fingers while the while it was still wet and so that's what I did to create this sort of um, um, layer of, of crud over it to kind of help give it a feeling of um, you know maybe somebody disappearing away yeah, I love Polaroid 55, so wish we can still get that. <laughs> I know. Uh, this is an illustration I did for a theater uh, to promote, it was for a poster, to promote um, a book by uh, Isabel Allende, House of the Spirits. And so this is, again, this is such simple lighting. It's basically... Um, one hot light on the subject, one hot light on the background, and then this bird cage and these three birds I just strung up with fishing wire and they're just in the same picture but I shot it with one of those uh, lens baby lenses so it allowed me to throw this all out of focus while her face was in focus and then I, I photographed this journal separately uh, as if she had been writing in it because she's holding it there and uh, I just blended the two uh, digitally. Um, this is a personal piece for a long-term project called 4 and 20 Blackbirds. Again, uh, my fascination with birds and the human body. And this is another one from that. And uh, it, the whole pro project is on uh, Polaroid film. I did lots and lots and lots of work with Polaroid. Uh, this is an image I did for Getty Images. We did a series of uh, animal portraits. And so uh, this little girl was with a dog uh, who was a retired Greyhound race dog. Well, at the time I did this portrait, um, I had five dogs in my studio, which you can see is not all that big. She was amazing. Uh, this is a, one of uh, several pictures I did for the Seattle Symphony to celebrate their 95th anniversary, and I wanted to create kind of a um, old master's painting kind of look. So I worked with uh, some set people, uh, they painted some backdrops for me, painted the floor, um, I worked with stylists to get the costumes, and again, she's got a bird in her hand, and um, I did I did a, a whole series of these portraits that were kind of a little bit wacky. And this is a uh, image I did for the Seattle Opera to illustrate uh, the Flying Dutchman uh, um, 
opera and this is just a photograph in my studio very simple lighting and this is a, a handkerchief that belonged to my grandmother that I photographed separately and blended the two together it's beautiful thank you this is one I did for Weston Hotels um, for a big package they put together for weddings and um, you know, again, my lighting is simple, uh, but this is a little more complicated. Uh, blended a little bit of daylight with uh, these tungsten lights, and then I lit. Uh, I wasn't getting good enough light on the dress, so I lit it with a soft box. And then to create a little pattern here, I used a tungsten veto light, which is a wonderful light that I use. Uh, quite often to create light patterns uh, when I do still lifes. Mm -hmm. I, I love doing still lifes. So um, that's how that all came together. And this is a um, uh, four by five. So with you're a, using a, uh, using really a yellows. What? Yeah, so you're using a cucoloris or a cookie in front of the I'm using small a, light? A cookie to create a light mm -hmm. pattern here. Nice. And then this big heavy shadow is created by tilting the um, standard front standard uh, with the lens in it allows it to get out of focus but then it gave this sort of curved shadow to it that one you've seen this is a, a one of my many photographic hobbies is doing still lifes and this um, is just you know I'm just passionate about light and still lifes so this is just a um, I collect letters from France and I uh, just combined a bunch of elements that mm. I found at a junk store down the street mm. to create this little piece. Are you still working mostly strobe or are you done to move to any LEDs or anything like that? Um, you know, uh, well, this one is all uh, continuous light. This is just daylight with a uh, Dito tungsten Dito light mm -hmm. blending for a little warmth. Um, I use strobes and I use uh, um, daylight balanced LEDs. I use whatever need I need to. If I want some motion blur in my picture, I'll use a continuous source. Great. Example. Here's another still life. Yeah, I love your pairs. <laughs> Uh, very simple lighting. I've, I'm using uh, hot lights on this. That's my book. There's another image from my book. Another image, uh, a figure study that um, I was a co private commission. This woman was going through uh, some major health issues. And she brought along this chair that's got a painting by Gauguin on it. And it was perfect, it belonged to her aunt, and I photographed her with it, and it pertained uh, to her health problem. So it was a wonderful opportunity for me. And then uh, just finally, uh, this is a portrait I did in my studio. I love natural light so much. Um, there's something about it. I like to work with, uh, I use the, uh, Canon uh, 85 1.2 lens for portraits. And I just love the softness that I get uh, with that lens. So any questions? That's all I put in. Okay, we're, we're right at the top of the hour. So it's a good time for questions, comments. The work is just beautiful. <laughs> Thank you for sharing it. You're certainly welcome. I. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, yeah, if anybody has any other questions, I, I love to talk. <laughs> I thought you told me you were Norwegian and you were going to be quiet. <laughs> I know, but you know, I, I love to talk about, I don't like okay. to talk about myself, but I like okay. to talk about photography. Um, I don't remember. Do you have a, a, a skylight in the studio or just the side no. windows? I've got... Um, I've got just big, a big window. If I turn my computer, you can see this. I have a big window here. It gets north light. 
Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's, and fortunately the house nearby is painted a really neutral color. <laughs> it used to be turquoise. Oh, wow. <laughs> a, a long time ago. So I'm happy about its color. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, people, this is your last chance to ask some questions here. Newell, are you being so quiet today? Are you shy? Uh, um, no, no, no. <laughs> Me? <laughs> um, no, I'm thinking about um, the lighting that you have behind you and above you. Yeah. And they're connected into what kind of power pack? Um, I have some old pro photos that I've had for like 30 years. And the and the salt boxes are what are they chimeras or? Um, they're, I have plumes, and then I've got a octodome over here. Uh, I've got sense. a couple of, I've got an overhead plume, a medium sized soft box, and then I've got another one um, there, medium same size, medium size. I do lots. So of it, it, it looks. It looks to me like what you did was you, you have this house and you completely converted the attic. Yes, that's exactly right. Did you have to extend the, uh, the roof or was no, it no. the roof? It's just sort of unbelievable because the height of the backdrop there is... Mm, I'm going to walk back there so you can see, okay? Okay. Uh-huh. And remember, Roseanne is six feet tall. <laughs> I'm five feet two, five foot one, getting shorter <laughs> by the year. Um, yeah, so it's high enough for me to get a backdrop up, and it's high enough for me to get that hair light up. Uh, and there's enough depth in here for me to. It's. Uh, what's, what's the longest lens you use? The longest. Inside, yeah. Generally, I use uh, thirty-five to seventy. I mean, a uh, twenty twenty-four seventy. So seventy millimeters is the longest lens that you use inside. I have used uh, um, uh, two hundred, but but n not really very often. I the seventy is fine. And if I'm working outside, I might use the uh, 200 if I want to get, uh, you know, really shallow depth of field, or if I want to isolate the subject, or if I want to do a close-up portrait. Um, but I do find I do a lot of work where I'm closer to the subject because I like to have that energy interaction. And I, I you know, I used to have 300 millimeter lenses too, but I, I have no call for that, so I sold those. That's no, you can't carry them anymore. Come on. Let's... <laughs> well, I, I have to say that's an issue because I have carried so much equipment. Uh, I was on a cruise once where I photographed and I had my 200 millimeter lens on for a week. And it took my knuckles about uh, six months to recover from that photo shoot of, of running around with that camera, <laughs> holding it in my hand like this. So I am happy to work with shorter lenses, and I, I do love, really love the being close to my subjects. So the, the shorter lenses work. The shot that you uh, showed of the ballerina in the, uh, the boathouse in, yeah. in, with the bird. Yeah. Um, that looked like to me, it was shot with a I'm going to say a um, a 35 or 45 millimeter uh, tilt shift lens to keep everything nice and straight. The the uh, uh, the vaulted ceiling and the, uh -oh. and the uh, and the um, the columns were absolutely dead on. Mm -hmm. Was that a 35 millimeter or was that the uh, a 645? Oh, uh, you know, I think it was a 64. Five. It might. It might have been the contacts medium format. Okay. Because I. I might have switched over by then. I can't remember. I would have to go look at the shape of the negatives and tell you. So what? When when you do something like that, 
is it more important for you to keep the architectural lines parallel with each other and allow the, 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 uh, the subject matter to do whatever he or she wants? Or, or doesn't the architectural, uh, law, or doesn't it matter what happens with the architectural lines? I am very careful about architectural lines. Um, it really bothers me when, because, because I, I find it can be distracting. So it's a juggling act of, you know, uh, what's the meaning of the photograph? What am I trying to um, say here? What, uh, how seriously do I need to have everything be perfect? But I am very, very careful about how I set things up. Mm -hmm. So um, I was probably pretty careful about getting those lines to match. Nowadays, you can fix things, but um, back then, I, I was probably pretty pretty careful about it. The three, uh, pre, uh, the three ballerinas, mm -hmm. was that shot inside the building for the uh, New York? It was uh, inside a building on Long Island. Oh, so it wasn't taken in Manhattan? No, most of them were except for, uh, you know, uh, well, except for a few. And that, yeah, I was, I remember now, I was using the context media format. Um, all right, no, that was at a famous garden on Long Island. I can't remember the name of it. Oh. Uh, and, and it was like a, a screened in room. And it was raining out, so it, it worked out perfectly. Okay. So, John, it's Going on to another question I asked before about inspiration from photographers, uh, it also meant to ask about painters, and John brought that up in the chat. Are there painters that you go to for inspiration? Absolutely, and all the time. Um, I studied art, and I studied art history, and um, well, it's hard to say. There are, are so many mm -hmm. uh, artists who, who move me. Um, I've got a whole list of painters in my teaching. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you have a really strong education in lots of areas. Starting with, uh, you know, just for example, Matisse mm -hmm. and his wonderful way with women and, and, and you know, some of, not his cutout work, his paintings of women, lying on lounges and, and that kind of thing. Um, trying to find my... But yeah, I am very influenced by art. Is it the usual suspects like Gauguin, Matisse, Seurat, Monet? I'm, I'm trying uh, to find my... Bingo. So one I love to use for um, teaching uh, is Caravaggio. I, I think that his use of light is just so, I mean, he came along and completely changed everything with his chiaroscuro. And then uh, Artemisia Gentileschi, who was his kind of contemporary female artist, had a big show that I went to at um, Metropolitan Museum in New York, and her use of light is similar to his. Um, I, I'm, you know, fascinated by those guys. Um, there are other people too. I mean, uh, there's a woman named Pooh Shadler. You probably wouldn't know her, but she uh, she does these beautiful. Um, uh, egg tempera paintings, real classic um, uh, compositions. Uh, I spend quite a bit of time in museums, just looking at how the photographer, or how the photographer, how the artist has lit the work, because um, they had to have lit the work in in most cases using uh, lanterns or candlelight or um, whatever they do it contemporarily. Yeah, you have a class coming up at Photo Center later this month where you go over some of this. Yeah, I do. I just, I just put a link to it in the chat. 
Okay. Yeah, I'm teaching a, a class called See the Light. It's for everybody. It's for artists and writers who want to talk about lighting. It's, it's for, um, um, you know, beginning photographers. It's just for people who like to go to museums and look at pictures and have no idea how, uh, how they're how they're lit or what they're responding to. So uh, the class is just an overview beginning with um, the Renaissance paintings going through Caravaggio and then more uh, contemporary work and also photography. Picking apart catch lights and shadows. So just to give people a, a more enlightened experience when they go to um, an art gallery. So I, I don't feel like I answered your question very well. About, um, can, when, you, when, when, when you say you're teaching, I mean, we're not physically teaching. It's all virtual, correct? Right, so I'm teaching this little class uh, two hours through the Photo Center Northwest in Seattle. I think John put a link up to that. Yeah, it's a Zoom session about, like this. And it's and also how about, how about when, you're, when you go to read in Santa Fe? Oh, when I go to what? Oh, oh I'm, a Santa Fe workshop. I'm te I've taught there um, in person, uh, but I'm teaching a virtual lighting workshop. For five weeks? Six. six. Oh, six. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, wish me luck. <laughs> I said, I, I really think I, I can do it. I can, um, you know, it's better than not doing anything, but I think uh, I can make it work for people. Uh, was, was that your idea or yeah. Reed's idea? That was my idea. I taught lighting at physically there and I said, all these people are sitting home waiting for COVID to be over. How about if we try to teach uh, a lighting class online? So I proposed it and he got right back to me. And he goes, yeah, let's, let's do it. Six weeks, five, five days a week for six oh, weeks? Oh, oh. Yeah. It's one day. It's only two and a half hours. Oh, oh okay. And uh, like I said Never earlier, mind. <laughs> it's only one day, and uh, I I do a demonstration, I do a slideshow, and then uh, the following week, I receive everybody's assignments, and we critique them. And that's a big part of the class is teaching people um, really how to be very perceptive about light so that you can go away and teach yourself after the class is over. Greg Page has taken my class. Are you still there, Greg? I don't, yes, he's still there. Oh, well, he, maybe he's taking he's it. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've taken Roseanne's class at Photo Center Northwest a few years ago too. And then I've also assisted her at classes there. So yeah. we've worked together I, quite I, a bit. I'm still there. I took, I, I've taken it and, and uh, I think the value for me as an older male photographer was uh, getting an insight into, I think there's a different way in which, I don't know if this is correct or not, but I think there's a different way in which women and men look at light. And I picked up a few things there that helped me then in the following week use that in my actual exercises. And for me, the class was fantastic. And as I told Roseanne at the time, I was using Roseanne not so much as, a, as an instructor, but as a consultant. And she, by, in, the, in the assignments that she made and in the, pers in the critique that she gave afterwards, I learned a lot about lighting and in the interaction of the models that was, has really helped me. And I've taken classes with you know, all of us have probably taken classes with Ansel Adams and the Westons and the and uh, uh, Barbara Bordnick and so forth. But I really found uh, her class to be unique in the same way that her work is. So, if you're interested in it, I'd recommend it. Oh, thanks. Thank you. Well, well, we're up over over an, over an hour here now, so okay. I think we're going to start shutting down. But if anyone has less questions or comments. Uh, it's great to see so many people here today, a few new people. 
Uh, Ellen, welcome back. <laughs> I'll say uh, I certainly enjoyed your work and uh, uh, your style and the variety. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone, for taking time out of your day to join us. And to John, I think you're doing an amazing thing with all of your conversations. I've been Thank enjoying uh, listening to them on my own time. <laughs> and uh, and uh, check out the lighting classes if you're interested. If you have any questions, you can find my email on my website. Or it's just Roseanne at RoseanneOlson.com, but you have to spell it correctly. <laughs> I know I always have to look up the spelling. <laughs> it's R O S A N N E. It's uh, Rossan, <laughs> Rossan Olson, O N O L S O N. So I, I let me, well, can, we can continue, can we? <laughs> yeah, uh, of course. Uh, Roseanne, what do you do with all of the? Wait a minute. You you own all of your images, right? And, did not give away any copyright. Right, that's correct. What do you do with all those images? Well, that is a great question. Um, and I, it's not like I haven't thought about it. <laughs> For a long time, I was with Getty Images. Yeah. And they just changed their business models. So, I mean, I was at Getty Images before it was Getty Images when it was Tony Stone, and then before that it was all stock in Seattle. So, um, I- And then, and then Roger Russwire came in and, <laughs> and changed it all. Well, he sort of did, but then Getty ended up, and I know Roger too, but Getty ended up buying Corbis, so- No, I know, I, I know, I used to know Roger very, very, very well. He was oh. also part of the Explorers group. Okay, yeah, yeah, so I know Roger too, in fact, I photographed him here with his uh, then girlfriend. Um, Which one? <laughs> did he not marry this one, the most recent uh, one? I think oh, I don't, uh, I, I don't know, it's a toss up. <laughs> anyway, um, so the question is, so I withdrew all my pictures from Getty. And so it's kind of freeing in a way because for years and years I've traveled you know, taking pictures wherever I go, bring photo equipment, keeping up with all this Getty stuff, and I am free now. I don't have to do that as much. So all my images don't have a place anymore. And uh, one thing I'm considering is donating them to my alma mater uh, at the end of my career. Oh, okay. But between now and another 40 years, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do with those images? You know, I don't know, maybe I'll make uh, another book or something like that. And, and so I'm going to assume based on your answer that you don't offer them for sale on your website? No, I don't. Huh? <laughs> That's a great idea. Okay, I'll take a 10% overcut. <laughs> But why don't you do that? I've just never thought of it. Well, I mean, I mean, for, for my whole career, I was so involved with doing advertising and uh, all that promotion and all that stuff. I, it, it has never occurred to me to sell my work. Yeah, but you did. But you did. Oh, wait, so you're talking same old, same old. Okay, but but you were, you you gave your you gave your images to Getty. Uh huh. And you allow Getty to lease lease your yeah. work, okay? And then you took your images away from Getty, all right? And you can't think of how what to do with those images. It never occurred to me. Why don't you use the other side of your brain and <laughs> say, you know what? I can I can lease them or or I can lease them and also sell limited edition prints of these images. Okay, Michael, I'm gonna to have to talk to you in person. Oh, I don't know if you wanna do that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just don't talk to Ian before you talk, yeah, before you decide to talk to me. I, I, yes. I'll come back. No, 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 no,
And by the way, all right, there's a reason why he's slightly bald. All right. <laughs> After he gets done talking to me, he rubs his head on the on the rug. <laughs> <laughs> My hair out after I talk with Right, you. exactly. Yeah. Um, your images are beautiful. Thank you. No bullshit. All right. They're absolutely beautiful. I I would have thought you would have said to me that uh, you know, you have uh, uh, a limited edition run of of the the woman that's in the pool nude, and you're taking her from the head uh, 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 yeah. back. Okay, that's an incredible shot, and it's probably the only shot that I've ever seen with people in water where she doesn't look dead. <laughs> I mean, most of these, most of the shots in water, people look dead. Mm -hmm. You know, let's go back um, to Ophelia. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think it's hard to hold your breath. On it. <laughs> well, uh, there's a I forget the, I forget the photographer's name, and I should remember it. He's out of he's out of uh, uh, I want to say Los Angeles, uh, and he is a doctor, but he became a photographer. Oh, yeah. or, huh? I Who I can't remember. Uh, was it Chats? Um, oh, Chats, exactly right. Yeah. All right. Yeah, how Chats. Are you? Howard Chess, and he has. Oh, you know, Howard, he, Howard and I are friends. He has friends? No, no, no. <laughs> no. We're kind of. No, 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 I know, I know Howard. Um, and he, he, he built this pool. Um, probably, it was probably the, the, the very first infinity pool that was right. ever built. Am I right? Yeah. And, and, and the water in the pool is so clear, crystal clear. That you're able to shoot, and that's that's what he that's why he built it. All right. Yeah, actually, Brett Brett Weston had the first black pool. Yeah, Brett and Brett didn't go in the water. He had a window built. Well, that's my point. All right, but but with with uh, Schatz's uh, 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 pool, you can actually go in the water, and the water was crystal clear. Uh -huh. All right, um, but after a while, you know, showing people fully dressed. In water, you know, it, it looks like it's a um, it's 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 something that Ian would have investigated. You know, why are these people in the water if they, after their car fell off a cliff? <laughs> That's what they all look like. Ian yours, was an investigator before being a photographer. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I figured. Um, but your images look look real and alive. I I absolutely um, love them. Well, thank you. More, but more importantly, I was hoping that you would get get back to us and say, "Well, you know, I I sell, and I haven't looked at your website, but I'm I'm going to after we get done here, um, that there'd be a section showing your your images in limited edition runs, like a like a Robert like Farber, you know Robert Farber? Yeah, I do. Okay, so 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 Farber. Bobby and I go back when we were little kids together. <laughs> Farber is a master of marketing and advertising himself. He's a master at it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, that's something few of us photographers do well. I know. I miss that, Gene. <laughs> no, but, but Farber, I mean, if you want to learn anything about marketing uh, yourself and advertising yourself, it's, it's Farber. No doubt in my mind, um, uh, and and he has he has lots of books. I mean, maybe close to a hundred books, and um, and uh, his his posters and his uh, his limited edition prints. Um, I really thought that you were going to say this is what I, this is what I have on the side. And, and now I realize that once we get involved in doing all that that we kind of begin to dilute some of the things that we concentrate on. When that happens, that's the time that you need to take on other people to manage the different facets of your business mm -hmm. so that you don't have to worry about anything except creating more product. Ah. 
so that you don't have to schlep your own equipment. You understand <laughs> schlep, right? Yep. Okay. I've done lots. Um, <laughs> I mean, none of us are getting any younger and we need to be able to relinquish some of the things that we have done a hundred percent. That's what, that's what great masters do to teach the next generation of uh, image makers or painters or, uh, you know, landscapers, whatever. You can't keep doing this forever. Yeah. Beginning and end to all this. That's right. Ellen, um, it looks like you might want to add something to this. Do you? Well, and, I'm incredibly, oh. like, your work is amazing, Roseanne. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, it's and your journey all the way to this point is inspiring. I started with an Olympus OM2N <laughs> back in like 1970 something. Uh -huh. So, but I think that your idea of light and what you how you talk about it is it, it's it's fascinated me so much so that I'm going to look into your courses. Oh, that would be great. And Ellen's going to be on the show in January. She's traveling a lot through December, so we've, we've got to schedule it way out. What kind of work do you do, Ellen? Uh, started on the street, do portraiture, a lot of in-camera, multiple in-camera exposures, mm -hmm. um, extended frame using my street photography. Fine art. Very cool. Well, Ellen, where are you located? Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah, east side. <laughs> it's a difference. It is a difference. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm happy to meet you. I, I, I mean, whether you take my class or not, it's just, it's, there aren't that many uh, women photographers. Yeah, I guess that's something we didn't cover here is how was, how did you get into photography as a woman um, in, at that time in our history? It's had its challenges. <laughs> I, I, you know, I was, well, there, I was one of the only women working at the newspaper for one. And I'm, I'm very petite, and um, I, I think I had a hard time convincing people that I could do the job, uh, but I always did the job 200%. And so, um, but I um, have encountered some barriers here and there. I just keep going. It doesn't stop me. I just keep Great. going. I've got stories, but I'm not going to. <laughs> cool. I'm going to close the Facebook out right now. I'm going to hang on for a few minutes after that, though. So thanks to all the people watching on Facebook. We will see you next week with Gregory Heisler.